Today's webinar, Electrical Connectability, Copper versus Aluminum. Um, as Hans mentioned, uh, the, the prime thing I want to talk about are the two tests that we performed uh, at an independent laboratory in Canada. These are the corrosion current burst test and the current cycle test. But before I do that, I'd like to begin with a bit of an introduction about copper, aluminum, and aluminum alloy, go into a bit about contact theory, connector installation, and talk about the test lab where the work was done. At the end, uh, we'll uh, uh, conclude with a summary uh, and conclusions. Uh, I guess copper really needs no introduction. It's been used since the beginning of electrification. Aluminum, however, uh, started being used, as I understand it, in the early 1900s, primarily for overhead winding or overhead wiring because it's uh, very light. Um, at, uh, in the 1960s and 70s, it was uh, used in North America for wiring uh, homes, and th this was very unsuccessful. In fact, in Canada in the 70s, we had a, uh, a royal commission to um, <clears throat> review the, the, the problems with uh, aluminum wiring in homes. So to overcome some of these problems, the aluminum industry uh, uh, discovered and, and came up with a, a, an 8,000 series alloy of aluminum, which is sold in North America under the name Stabiloy in the United States, or Stabiloy and Newal in Canada. And in uh, North America, at least, uh, the, uh, this aluminum alloy is often marketed as equivalent to copper, which I think you'll find out that it is not. Uh, just a summary here of the uh, uh, things that most people understand about uh, copper and aluminum. First of all, copper is about uh, three, a bit over three times uh, uh, more massive per unit volume than aluminum. Uh, its thermal conductivity uh, is uh, much better, and of course its electrical conductivity is better. Uh, this generally means that copper wire is about, uh, can be about two sizes uh, smaller than the, uh, than the equivalent aluminum wire. In the case of the 8000 series, uh, the small alloying uh, metals are not, uh, they, they don't really uh, affect these particular parameters uh, in the aluminum alloy. So they're the, <clears throat> excuse me, they're the same as the pure aluminum. Now for something uh, that where the aluminum alloy uh, does improve things a little bit. Uh, first of all, I'm not sure if many people are familiar with what creep and stress relaxation are. First of all, creep, if you uh, apply a, a, a force, a constant force to any material, it will uh, change its dimensions over time. Um, and this is called creep. If you apply, if you confine a material to a constant dimension, the force that, the spring force that the material uh, gives back in that direction will relax over a period of time. And this creep and stress relaxation are related parameters in, in any material. For copper, it's a very uh, stable material, a very stable metal, and the creep and stress relaxation is, is uh, the lowest of the three. Pure aluminum uh, creeps and stress relaxation at, uh, stress relaxes at a, a rate that is about eight times higher than, um, uh, than copper. And the 8000 8, series aluminum alloy is somewhere in between that. Thermal expansion is a, another important feature. Um, that's simply the amount of expansion that takes place in the material uh, per degree Kelvin or degree Celsius. And for copper, it's, um, it's around 17. For, a, for pure aluminum, it's uh, uh, a bit higher, 
um, not quite twice as high. And again, aluminum alloy is somewhere in between, although it's uh, actually closer to aluminum than to uh, copper. Flexibility, copper is very flexible, can be drawn down to very fine wires, uh, sometimes the size of a human hair. Uh, aluminum, not so flexible. Uh, it's not usually used in flexible cable. Copper is, is uh, used extensively in flexible cables, uh, mining cables, uh, trailing cables, and, and braids, and so on. The aluminum alloy is, is again, somewhere in between these, uh, these two as far as flexibility. Uh, the ultimate tensile strength, copper is stronger. Aluminum is about uh, four times uh, weaker, and uh, the aluminum alloy is somewhere in between. Now the interesting part, um, copper has a, uh, a, an oxide coating, or it can grow an oxide coating, but it, it's uh, generally when it, uh, when it grows an oxide on it or, or has an oxide uh, coming on its surface, you can see it. It's a soft material, and it's uh, semiconducting. Uh, aluminum and aluminum alloy, uh, however, uh, has a very, very hard um, uh, invisible oxide coating, aluminum uh, oxide, and it's also a very good insulator, which makes it, which leads to difficulties in making connections. As far as the corrosion resistance, uh, copper is very resistant to corrosion. Uh, it uh, it it uh, is uh, on the what we call the cathodic uh, end of the the galvanic uh, cable, and there aren't uh, cable, and there aren't very uh, many metals which are more uh, resistant to corrosion than copper. Aluminum, on the other hand, is on the opposite end, and it is subject to corrosion uh, very easily. However, uh, one of the interesting things is that the oxide coating protects the aluminum so that it doesn't corrode in, in normal use. I mean, that's why uh, aluminum boats are used and aluminum airplanes don't uh, uh, the wings don't fall off of aluminum airplanes. It's primarily because of this uh, uh, very strong oxide coating. Um, a little bit about contact theory now. This oxide coating, I think, is one of the most important things. And it, 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 as I say, it often covers metallic surfaces, particularly aluminum and aluminum oxide. When the contacts are forced together, the metal-to-metal -metal contact is made at only a few spots uh, because of the oxides, um, and um, this is this has been uh, known for quite a long time. This uh, this the fact that uh, the actual uh, spots where metal-to-metal -metal, uh, makes contact in a in a, um, a connector or, or a, across a contact are uh, sometimes uh, down on the order of only 1% of the, of the uh, area of the, of the contact. These are called the asperities, where the contacts are made. And uh, roughened surfaces make more and larger metal-to-metal -metal contact spots because of this. And uh, we'll go on to uh, a diagram here to illustrate this. If you uh, look at uh, the upper part, uh, diagram one, you see on the left-hand side, lower left-hand side of that, uh, uh, two pieces of metal. And the exploded view shows the oxide layer. Now this, in, in copper's case, uh, there, there will be always some uh, small uh, bits of oxide around, but generally it's pretty bright copper. On the aluminum, it'll be covered with a pretty good film of this uh, very strong uh, insulating oxide layer. When you bring the two surfaces together, in the aluminum's case, you can have this uh, oxide uh, between them, which makes for a very poor contact. And that's why normally, uh, in this slide we show, in normally we, we suggest that people uh, braid the contact area or wire brush the contact area when they're making a uh, 
a high current contact. In this case, when you bring the, uh, the, the two materials together, as shown in the figure two, uh, you get uh, more frequent metal-to-metal -metal, uh, contact spots, more frequent asperities, and this is where the contact, where the current actually flows through those metal-to-metal -metal contacts. Uh, here we have a plot of the contact resistance on the left-hand side and the contact force uh, along the um, x-axis. Uh, when you bring two materials together and you begin tightening some type of a bolt or a, or a crimping, you force the two materials together, so you increase the contact force to the right along that blue line. As you do that, the actual resistance across the contact goes down until you reach some point, uh, depending on the design of the connector um, that uh, we've, we've labeled as, as uh, F1, capital F1. And this is the force at which uh, the contact uh, we, we hope will operate. Um, the uh, the resistance at that con at that force is resistance R capital R. Um, as the the contact force changes, and the reason it changes is because of uh, what we talked about stress relaxation, and also the uh, thermal thermal um, uh, changes in the dimension, the thermal expansion, the thermal contraction of the metal as it as it cools. Uh, as the contact operates over its uh, long period of time, uh, I mean, it could be in service for 25 uh, to 40 years, um, depending on the life of the contact, uh, what you're expecting. The contact, uh, the resistance, or sorry, the force will move along that uh, red line right uh, uh, towards, the, towards the left, and uh, Eventually, if there's enough uh, uh, stress relaxation on the contact, you'll reach a point F2 where the contact starts to break the asperity contacts and the resistance goes up. Generally, uh, when this happens, the contact is uh, it's, uh, it's beginning to die. Uh, once you start breaking the asperities and you can't, remake these easily, uh, corrosion builds up in there and so on, uh, your resistance will rise and the, and the contact is, uh, is uh, failing. Um, now, as far as uh, connector installation, then we, this leads to some what we call best practices. Um, in the case of aluminum, we always recommend, and, and the aluminum industry does this, and most of the installation standards recommend that you wire brush or abrade the aluminum in some way. For copper, uh, there's no, no necessity for wire brushing uh, unless the copper is very corroded. Uh, generally, just wipe it clean. It, it's uh, good. For corrosion protection, uh, the aluminum people and, and most installation guides rec recommend what's called an oxide inhibitor or a contact lubricant, and there's a number of different varieties of these. For, contact, uh, for copper, rather, there's uh, no contact lubricant, no oxide inhibitor uh, necessary. Um, and then, of course, you have to apply the correct torque on the bolt and you have to use the correct uh, crimping tool as recommended by the manufacturer. A little bit about bolt torque here because I mentioned uh, contact for force, or I mentioned bolt torque. Um, unfortunately, the, the thing which is important in, in the contact is not the bolt torque, it's the, it's the compressive force that's applied by the, by the bolt. And unfortunately, we can't measure that compressive force because the bolts are very small. We, we'd have to put some type of a load cell on the bolt, and it would be very, very hard to do on these small bolts. So as a proxy for that, uh, for that uh, contact force, we use uh, the torque. Uh, 
Unfortunately, the torque does not directly relate to bolt force, and this is something that uh, uh, is sort of easy to understand if you think about the, the thread uh, around, the, uh, around the bolt. If, for example, that thread is unlubricated, if it's dirty, if it's sticky, if the connector is old, the, the threads will require a higher torque to produce the same force. So what I'm, my point here is that contact force uh, is not, or, or sorry, uh, bolt torque is not necessarily going to give you what you really want uh, in your connector, which is a sufficient force uh, on the, uh, uh, from the bolt. Um, here was an interesting uh, bit of work that uh, the aluminum industry people did in North America at their, some of their trade shows. They had uh, um, a number of people visiting the, the, trade, show, uh, the trade show booth, and uh, they asked them to tighten up a bolt to, to, uh, to, what, to the torque that they thought was adequate. And they, uh, they allowed them to use a torque wrench, but it, they didn't allow them to see the digital readout on the torque wrench. And then they just recorded the torque wrench that they, they, uh, they used. And it turns out that if you look, uh, say, on overall, the 402 people who tightened up their, the bolt, only 25% of the people actually got the torque to within plus or minus 20% of the recommended torque for that bolt. Greater than 50% were way under the, the torque and uh, uh, less, than, less than a quarter, only about 20, 22% uh, were above the recommended torque. And it, it, uh, it really got bad in the area of the, uh, when they used a, a, a little Allen uh, uh, wrench, which are very small to hold. Uh, most of the people under torqued uh, those types of bolts. Um, so uh, this is uh, my conclusions as far as connector installations. I'm, I, what I title this as, even if you do it right, you still may have some problems when you're making a, a uh, uh, connection. Uh, if you wire brush the conductor outside, Everything is right on the outside of the stranded conductor, but most people I know, or most electricians, do not separate its individual strands and wire brush every strand. And so the, the connection between the strands and the conductor can be uh, affected by the oxide on those, particularly on the aluminum strand. And even if you use a torque wrench when you're tightening up a bolt, um, you, you may get uh, aged connector, you may get uh, dry and what I call sticky threads, and the torque is not, the torque that you supply does not supply an efficient, uh, an effective uh, force on the, on the bolt. Also, you might say, well, let's use crimp connectors all the time. Well, um, one thing that uh, we find, I, I know this is true in, in North America, and I think it's true in, a, in uh, most countries, uh, you can't really avoid bolted connectors. Um, there are usually bolted connectors on circuit breakers, on uh, receptacles, and on plugs, on bus connectors, and, and uh, on things like case ground. So, in any electrical circuit, uh, in industrial, commercial, or residential, you're probably going to find some bolted uh, connections. Uh, now we're getting uh, near the uh, where, where I'm going to talk about our tests that we performed. The uh, the test laboratory that we chose to to perform these tests is located uh, near the the city that I'm uh, speaking from right now, Vancouver, British Columbia. Powertech Labs. Uh, Powertech Labs is a wholly owned subsidiary of the British Columbia Hydro, which is uh, the electric company for the province of British Columbia in Canada. Um, it's uh, primarily uh, gen it primarily generates electricity from large hydroelectric dams, so the name is BC Hydro. Uh, 
Uh, the lab has over 100 technical and support staff providing testing, diagnostic, and research services to a group of clients worldwide. And they have uh, laboratories in electrical, chemical, civil, mechanical, and materials. They actually have the, uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, open lab uh, in uh, a high voltage lab, rather, in Canada, and one of the largest in uh, North America, going up to 500 kV class. And they have a very large uh, high power lab uh, at this facility also. Our first test, which we call the corrosion current burst uh, test, is a, is a, it's not a standard test, but it was developed at PowerTech uh, as a severe test, uh, and we used it to compare the electrical performance of various copper and aluminum alloy con conductors with uh, different electrical connect connections. And I emphasize severe um, in, in this case, uh, and it is an accelerated aging test. Uh, I, I use the term accelerated because obviously if you install the uh, connectors, you want them to last for uh, 25 to 40 years in service, um, you're obviously not going to have a test that lasts 25 to 40 years. So somehow you have to uh, put in some features which will uh, uh, shorten the test to, uh, to a reasonable amount of time. In this case, we temperature cycle the connectors. We add a corrosion component, and we, uh, we uh, test the connectors uh, electrically by providing current bursts at various times to simulate uh, fault currents uh, during the connector's life. Um, the connector samples in this case were 30 lug connectors. Um, they were off the shelf, as I, I call them. They were bought at uh, local uh, shops. Uh, they were not selected. In the copper connectors, we had six compression and four mechanical, single bolt mechanicals. These are very common connectors that are used in uh, all over uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, the use uh, worldwide. You, you may uh, know more about that uh, in other countries uh, than I do. On the aluminum side, we, we chose uh, 20 aluminum. These aluminum connectors are tin pla uh, plated, so they're actually rated for use. They're called dual rated. They're use, uh, they're, they can be used on either aluminum or copper connectors, uh, or on copper conductors and uh, 12 of those were compression and eight mechanical. And the, we followed the manufacturer's uh, installation. On all the aluminum samples, we used an oxide inhibitor. And uh, all of these uh, connectors, I should mention, meant, uh, met the American National Standard Institute ANSI standard C119.4 which is a 500 cycle current test. And here are the connectors, the, the uh, copper on the top, uh, the crimp on the left, the uh, single bolt mechanical on the right. Uh, the aluminum ones in the center are designed for the smaller aluminum conductors, and the aluminum ones on the bottom are, are are chosen to match the uh, aluminum uh, conductor, which is uh, larger. The conductor samples uh, were, um, the copper was a, a, a two-aught uh, American wire gauge, which is a 67.4 uh, millime uh, square millimeter cross-section. The aluminum alloy was the Canadian uh, uh, trademarked aluminum uh, alloy, 8000 series alloy. It was a 4 aught, which is a 107 uh, square millimeter cross section. Copper samples were not wire brushed and had no oxide inhibitor. They were just as they were. Uh, we wiped them with, uh, or we, by we, I mean the, uh, the laboratory people wiped them uh, with a, a cloth. 
before they were were installed. The aluminum alloy um, uh, wire, uh, the conductor was wire brushed and uh, provided with oxide inhibitor. And we used welded equalizers uh, on the end of the connector and I'll, on the end of the uh, uh, conductor opposite the connector. And I'll show this in the next slide here. Um, in the center, you see the, the lug connectors. They're bolted together. The contact that we are interested in is the contact between the the wire, the, the copper wire coming into these uh, uh, dual rated aluminum connectors, and the, uh, the, the contact is, is the, uh, the one that is either crimped or that goes in and gets held in by the single bolt. The two lug connectors are bolted together. That contact was not part of the test. We would actually uh, make sure that it, it uh, uh, was maintained during the test, but uh, we weren't concerned about that test. We were concerned about the, about that contact, rather. We were concerned about the contact between the copper conductor and the aluminum connector. And we measured the resistance between that connector body. We would put a, a small uh, dimple uh, uh, a mark on the, uh, on the aluminum lug and we would put another mark out on this uh, copper uh, bar on the, on the right and left hand side and we would measure the resistance between the aluminum lug or the, the copper lug in case of copper connectors and the equalizer. And uh, that's the only aluminum uh, or that's the only resistance uh, you can measure and then we, com we compared that as we went along. We did the, uh, the, um, the corrosion protocol that we used is, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, 2,000 hours uh, in four-hour cycles in an environmental chamber. We did an hour and 45 minutes of a salt fog, two hours of a dry heat at 70 degrees C. The salt fog was, was on at uh, 20 degrees C room temperature and 15 minutes of a clear water, what we call rain, to wash the salt off. And then we repeated that cycle, four-hour cycle, 500 times. The fog uh, was 3% uh, uh, sodium chloride solution uh, buffered uh, down to an acidic 5.2. This is a, uh, an ASTM standard uh, uh, salt fog that, that we used for corrosion uh, stimulation here. Uh, in this case, it, we simulate road salt and seed, uh, seaside conditions is, is what are very common, but also uh, conditions in many industrial and commercial installations. Salt is probably the most uh, ubiquitous uh, chemical uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the environment is uh, sodium chloride. Um, uh, the current burst protocol, every 500 hours, uh, which is uh, uh, 125 cycles, uh, four hour cycles, we did five uh, current bursts. The copper was uh, 1,800 amps and the aluminum alloy conductor was 1,750 amps. And, the, um, and uh, we maintained that, that current until the, the control conductor, which was in series with these, reached uh, 250 degrees C. And uh, between uh, our current burst, we allowed the control conductor to uh, cool to 40 degrees C. And this current level was designed to produce uh, melting of the asperities, and it's discussed in some detail in the, uh, the actual uh, uh, report uh, if, we, if you are interested in finding uh, out about uh, why we chose these current levels. Um, and the report is available on uh, our website. Connector resistance measurements were, were taken using a four-point method. Uh, we injected a 10 amp DC into the equalizer and we measured the voltage between the lug and the equalizer, and that gave us a resistance across that uh, 
the contact of interest, which was either the crimp or the bolted uh, uh, connector onto the conductor. The resistance between the connector and the equalizer was what we measured. We made this measurement every 170 hours and also before and after each uh, current burst. And uh, we considered a 5% increase uh, was considered significant, and a 10%, well, we called that a failure. Uh, here are the aluminum samples uh, on the aluminum conductor before the test. After the test, here are the aluminum connectors on the copper conductor before the test. After the uh, uh, corrosion uh, cycling, and here are the copper connectors on the copper conductor before and after the, uh, the corrosion. Um, the, um, during the test, I guess we, we, we did have uh, some problems. We discovered some aluminum equalizers had actually failed. Um, and this, we thought, might have been due to the salt fog on the, on the welds. So we had to go through and test all of our um, equalizers, the copper and the, uh, the aluminum, by doing what's called a, a current distribution test around the outer strands of the conductor, measuring voltage uh, at uh, uh, distances, DC voltages when we put in a DC current. We measured them on each individual strand of the conductor to determine whether the the strands all had the same amount of current flowing through them. If we found a, a, what we thought was an equalizer that was, uh, was failed, we replaced it during the test. And I think we had to replace, uh, they, they had to replace uh, four or five connectors, uh, or sorry, alum aluminum equalizers. Uh, the copper equalizers uh, had no uh, failures. Uh, this is an example of, a, of an equalizer failure. Um, and you can see the strands uh, were uh, broken. And uh, so we, we cut the wire off uh, at a place uh, near the right hand of that picture, reinstalled the equalizer, and then we allowed for the change in resistance because of the uh, shortened uh, period, a uh, shortened piece of, of conductor. Uh, now here are the results. On the far right-hand side, you see the, the change in current after the end of the test. Uh, this is percentage change in the, uh, sorry, change in resistance at the end of the test. The copper wire, the copper conductor on copper connectors are on the far right, labeled C1 through 10. The, um, the uh, copper wire on the aluminum um, dual rated connectors are the B1 through 10 and they're in the center and the all aluminum is um, on the, the left and you can see that uh, we had to remake uh, a number of the insulators the word remake is in there remade and you can see that uh, in some cases there was failures uh, after a remade, and in some cases uh, there was uh, no no failure was indicated. But it it uh, you can see that there were uh, quite a bit more failures in the all aluminum system. The uh, the actual results in the all aluminum system: four of the of the uh, connectors out of ten failed. Uh, one uh, showed a significant increase. Uh, the copper conductor with the aluminum uh, dual rated connector, uh, none failed, but four showed a significant increase. And the all copper system, uh, uh, seven had a small increase and three had a de decrease in resistance. It's not unusual to, uh, to find a, a decrease in resistance, I should say. Some, some things do get better. Uh, in the life of a of a accelerated aging test. Conclusion: poorest performance all aluminum system dual rated uh, decreased the performance the de de the dual rated connectors and the all copper system uh, uh, had no significant change. It appears that uh, new all 
likely and unlikely other uh, 8000 series alloys uh, have not fixed historical problems with connectors. Uh, next, our current cycle test. We evaluated aluminum and aluminum alloy conductors with bolted, in this case only bolted connections with a, a severe uh, test. And in this case, we wanted to look at the effects of bolt torque, wire brushing, and application of contact lubricants was another thing we tried to learn here. We used 60 single bolt connectors off the shelf again. Um, these uh, 12 were copper and 48 were dual rated aluminum. Uh, similar to the ones we use, you'll, you'll see them in a, a short time here, similar to the bolted connectors we used in the previous test. We used the, um, uh, for the aluminum um, connectors, we did with and without oxide inhibitor and with and without uh, wire brushing on the conductor. For the copper samples, we had no oxide inhibitor and no conductors were wire brushed. We also did uh, torquing of the, uh, of the screws on the bolts on, in all cases, aluminum and copper, 70, 100%, and 125% of the rated torque. Again, all the connectors met the North American standard, the 500 cycle test, which, by the way, is a, considered a very, um, uh, not a very strenuous test, by the way. Uh, the conductor in this case was uh, uh, number one copper, 42.4 uh, square millimeters cross-section. The aluminum alloy was, again, Newall, this time uh, 2 aught, uh 67.4 uh, square millimeters cross-section. The copper conductors, no wire brushing, as we said. The aluminum were installed in three ways, wire brushing, uh, no wire brushing or oxide inhibited, uh, inhibitor, which is a very poor practice, but it happens all the time. Uh, we had uh, no wire brushing with the oxide inhibitor, which is common practice to forget the wire brushing. Uh, but it's also poor practice, and we did the the thing the the installation as recommended, which is wire brushing and oxide inhibitor, and we again had welded equalizers on the opposite end of the uh, of the conductor. As a guide, we used the IEC standard uh, current cycle test, which is a 1,000 cycle test. We increased the number of cycles to 1,500 cycles. This is a much more stringent, stringent test, than, and it's used uh, in uh, many countries in the world. But it's a much, much more stringent test than UL or, or ANSI. Um, we did 1,500 cycles at uh, two, 280 amps, one hour on, one, and, one hour and 15 minutes off. And at the 200th cycle, we applied a one short circuit of 6,400 to 6,800 amps for one and a half seconds to bring the conductor up to uh, 250 to 270 degrees. The tests were evaluated by contact resistance and temperature rise. Uh, here's the... Um, uh, table showing the number of connectors. In all case, with every one of the, uh, the, the different uh, uh, characteristics on installation, uh, we had uh, four samples of, of each connector. These are all mechanical single bolt connectors. Here's an example of the aluminum um, on the aluminum conductor, the aluminum connector. You can see the thermocouples going out and uh, Here's an example of the, the uh, copper conductor with the copper connectors, thermocouples on the connectors. And uh, here's a setup uh, being held up by, uh, by uh, a wooden frame um, as we uh, current cycled. Uh, here's a typical uh, heating cycle showing the heat rise, the temperature rise on, all, on a number of uh, connectors. The, the, uh, the characteristic as far as temperature is concerned is the temperature rise above the control connector. We had connectors or conductors with no um, 
connectors on in series with our, our current cycle uh, setup, and we would uh, uh, subtract the temperature on the conductor on the connector from the control connector, and that would give us our uh, temperature rise. Uh, these are the results uh, for the resistance ratio. The, the um, sort of copper-colored connectors are the connectors in the middle. Uh, all of those pass the resistance criterion. The ones on the far right are the, are the various uh, Remember, we had uh, all sorts of different installation practices and different levels of torque. So we had a lot of failures in those cases. And those are the all aluminum system, uh, all aluminum uh, uh, setups with the aluminum uh, connector and the aluminum conductor. On the far left, we have just the uh, copper conductor with the uh, dual rated uh, aluminum um, uh, connectors and we had a, a few failures with those. This is the temperature rise. Again, the copper ran, uh, the rise actually was uh, uh, very cool near the control temperature on the copper. This is the, the, the difference between the control connector and the, uh, um, the control conductor and the connector. And you see the copper in the center, is, uh, uh, the, the, the rise is uh, near zero. On the far right, we have the all aluminum system with the various uh, types of installation and torque. A lot of uh, rise above uh, uh, 40 degrees, which is a very high uh, rise above uh, um, the control conductor. And on the left, the copper conductor uh, with the dual-rated um, connector. Okay, for the all-copper system shown here, uh, all the samples had relatively stable resistance and temperature. No samples failed. None showed a trend of significantly increasing um, resistance or temperature at the end of the test. Uh, here's the dual-rated connectors on the copper conductor. Um, we had 33% uh, of the samples failed, and there didn't seem to be much of a correlation between uh, the, uh, uh, the torque level in this particular case. They, they failed across the various ranges. Finally, in the all-aluminum uh, system, we actually had some that uh, failed during the uh, the short circuit test uh, catastrophically uh, breaking the, uh, <clears throat> the conductor, fusing the conductor. And in this one, 94% of the connectors uh, actually failed the test. It appears that the, the ones that were properly installed with aluminum, uh, with the uh, conductor uh, wire brushed and the um, contact lubricant applied, but with 125% of the rated torque, uh, they uh, did the best in the test. Finally, this is the last slide. Uh, the copper connectors in all the tests performed uh, without failures in all tests. The dual rated aluminum copper connectors lessened the performance when used on, on copper conductor. And the dual rated aluminum connectors on aluminum alloy conductor performed poorly in all tests. And our final conclusion is that uh, 8,000 series aluminum alloy is not equivalent to copper. I think that's uh, pretty obvious by our testing. And uh, that uh, concludes what I have to say. Um, I think I'm just a slight bit over time. Sorry about that. But uh, I guess we can still open it up to questions.